So today I want to talk about nested baselines. Nested baselines are, are kind of this new concept that's being proposed by, by a group of people who are just downright fed up with how screwed up regular carbon baselines are. And they see all the manipulation that's taking place. They see people drawing baselines and reference regions that are absolutely ridiculous and like issuing too many credits. And, and their solution is, we got to have an algorithmic approach. we got to have, have it so that every single forest carbon project has the same type of baseline. And so their solution was nested baselines. So, so how do nested baselines actually work? The idea is that we're going to look at an entire country or an entire state, and we're going to look at the deforestation rates every year. And if the deforestation rates go down from one year to the next, we're going to take those credits. We're going to calculate how much carbon was preserved in, in that area. Uh, and we're going to say, this is because of the forest carbon projects in that state. Therefore, those forest carbon projects are going to be issued with some amount of credits from that pool, from that, that difference. So maybe, for example, we're in the state of Pará in Brazil. Uh, it's 2019. There's really heavy deforestation. 2020 rolls along. Deforestation rates go down. They didn't actually go down. Uh, and the difference between 2019 and 2020 is, equates to about 50 million tons of carbon. Then the way that nested baselines would work is it would go to all the projects in that state, and it would say, OK, we've got this 50 million pool of, of carbon that was potentially preserved because this is uh, deforestation that didn't occur. Presumably, it didn't occur because of these forest carbon projects. Therefore, these carbon projects are going to be issued from that pool some amount of carbon. So maybe one carbon project will be issued with 1 million tons. Another one will be issued with 50,000 tons. So what are some nice things about this? It, it is an algorithmic approach. Every forest carbon project will have you know, a similar baseline. Uh, and it is, it is performance based, right? We're not just like drawing arbitrary lines. A country or a state genuinely has to reduce its emissions in order for the projects in that state to be you know, credited with anything. The other thing that's nice about this is that it completely eliminates leakage. No longer can we say, because this carbon project existed, the bad guys just harvested some other area in the state. Because the credits themselves are being issued based on the amount of deforestation that was avoided in the entire state. All right, so that's, that's the nice part, right? Algorithmic, nobody's drawing lines, no leakage. The nice part ends there because fundamentally this is a completely flawed concept. One of the fundamental problems with this approach is that an assumption is being made that deforestation is tied to whether or not these forest carbon projects are doing well. In reality, of the 100 forest carbon projects that I've ever looked at, never has regional de deforestation had anything to do with whether or not th these projects are taking place. You know, these projects may be protecting one little area of their country, they are not actually decreasing or increasing deforestation in the country at large. So for example, deforestation rates are correlated with politics. So if you know, uh, President Bolsonaro was elected to the, the country of Brazil, there, after that, because he's very conservative and he, he basically told everyone to go and cut the trees down, deforestation rates skyrocketed in Brazil. This had nothing to do with the forest carbon projects in Brazil. The pandemic caused timber uh, prices to rise again. This is creating increased demand and causing deforestation rates to go up in the Amazon. Uh, and so the, the existence of these forest carbon projects has, has nothing to do with whether or not, has really nothing to do with regional deforestation rates. The, the other, the absolutely fatal flaw with this, this concept is that the most justified projects, the absolute best projects, are taking place on the edge of the Amazon where deforestation rates are, go up every year. And so these projects are taking place you know, and preserving forests right on the edge, where year after year, there's more and more deforestation. We really need these projects to exist. But under this system, those projects would receive less or no credits at all. Just imagine, you know, if the state of Pará in, in Brazil increases in deforestation each year, then under this uh, baseline, all of the projects wouldn't receive any credits at all, even though they're the most valuable projects in existence. Likewise, picture a forest carbon project that has taken place in, in, a, in a country or a state that has already been completely deforested. So deforestation rates are really low, right? 
this project is essential because it's basically preserving the last forest on the entire landscape. But once again, because the difference between annual deforestation rates is not particularly high ar around the in the area around the project in the state, this project would receive little to no credits at all. And so it's actually backwards. Nested baselines make zero sense whatsoever. They're actually awarding credits to, to projects that are you know, less well justified, less additional. The other problem that I have with these nested baselines is that there needs to be some means of actually awarding the credits. So like I said, maybe 50 million credits are being awarded to all the projects in the state of Pará and Brazil. Great. How do we actually decide which, which projects get more credits and which get less? Well, the only way to make that decision is to do some sort of risk maps to say that this project was at greater risk than that project. Guess what you've just done? You've created a baseline. You've created the same type of baseline that Vera has been creating this entire time. So you've, you've basically just taken the credits and, and once again incentivized the project developers to come up with like creative ways of creating risk maps. Uh, but no, you say, our risk maps are going to be based on actual performance in the region. And so one of the things that I've seen proposed is that we just take the, the deforestation around the project that's occurred in the last, you know, 10 years, and that's the risk map for the project. We just say, you know, 20% uh, of the area around the project has been deforested, there, therefore uh, the, the project was, a, you know, that, that's, that's the risk, 20%. Uh, no. Again, we, we run into the same issues where, you know, if you've got a project that's surrounded on all sides by no forest because all the forest has been cut down, then by, by based on that, your risk map is going to be zero, which is ridiculous. And, and likewise, you know, there, there's just a thousand ways that you can manipulate these risk maps. So, you know, get, getting back to it, you know, I, I like where we're headed with, you know, algorithmic baselines. I like where we're headed with with baselines that are, you know, prescribed where every single project has to follow the same methodology. But nested baseline, baselines make zero sense. And it's, it's just going to incentivize unadditional forest carbon projects, you know, carbon projects that are taking place in areas that are not increasing in deforestation. And it's also just going to incentivize people to cheat on the risk maps, just the way that, that they're cheating on the baselines right now. And so, you know, really what we need we still need baselines. We still need an alternate scenario to say what would have happened uh, on the forest carbon project if the project didn't exist. But we need those baselines to be, you know, again, algorithmic, and, and they can't necessarily be driven by regional trends. But, it, but again, like fundamentally, the assumption that's being made by the nested baseline is that forest carbon projects are doing a good job. Therefore, the decrease in deforestation that we've seen in the region uh, should be attributed to them. And the two are just not connected at all. Regional deforestation rates have nothing to do with forest carbon projects. And I'm sorry, this is just a sad reality. There are just not that many forest carbon projects to be making you know, a widespread impact on the Amazon rainforest right now. Every single time I've seen deforestation rates driven by recessions, by macroeconomics, by politics, by events. So, so this is what's wrong with the nested baseline. To be clear, nested baselines are not a thing yet. You know, nobody has actually accepted this, but they're pretty far along in the negotiation. And I've even heard that, you know, Vera might be willing to accept this. So, oh my God, if it's actually adopted, you better believe I'm going to be jumping all over it. But, you know, you know, the solution to this is an algorithmic approach for estimating a baseline for a particular area of the forest. This is not beyond us. We can estimate how at risk a particular area of the forest actually is and issue credits based on that. We don't need to be looking at entire regions and then assigning credits based on, you know, whatever the, the carbon flux is from year to year in an entire country. It just doesn't make any sense. <sighs> that went off the rails. These topics are getting more and more difficult to deal with. Maybe I'm going to have to start sitting down in front of my computer with a script. <laughs>